Hello everybody and welcome to the Dead Linger build 009 Blood, Sweat and Tears. Now this is a massive, massive update so we're going to get right to it to show you all the beautiful new things that, that you can find in the Dead Linger 009. There's now a new zone apart from suburbs like you see over there called towns. Now they're a bit bigger and they do have those big office buildings you see in there. A world change that you can see here is you can see grass and foliage from much longer distances than before, before it was a bit shorter. And also grass is less likely to spawn on roads like like um, it was last patch where that was that road with the massive grass in the middle. That shouldn't happen anymore. As you see, as you see over there in this town zone, uh, there's a water tower. And that is because um, town zones will almost always have at least one water tower. And this is a town zone with buildings such as that one back there. Sweat stores have 20% chance of spawning in town zones, but only a 1% chance of spawning in suburban zones. Houses have different colors in different towns. Look at the amount of zombies in front of the sweat stores. Somebody, they must have followed somebody here. Transmission towers like the ones you see there now spawn in the world, and zombies seem to aggro much faster than you. Town zones like the one in front of me can spawn one or more water towers like you see over there. That one seems to have two right next to each other. Many LOD mo uh, models, which are distance imposters, have been updated, which means the farm crops should no longer appear solid green or yellow blocks from a distance. So over there you can kind of see the greenish, but it's not really like a block. Um, that's a bit too far away to see at all anyway, but um, if, if I get close I'll show you that. Road intersections don't appear dark or black anymore. Zombie spawn rates have been tweaked a bit. Starving zombies will spa spawn slightly more often, whereas healthy zombies will spawn slightly less often. Zombies now deal increased infection risk to survivors. Uh, it's, uh, it went up by 1% from, from 3 to 4. Zombies will now attack barricades at different speeds depending on their level of decomposition. For example, healthy zombies will hit doors and barricades more rapidly than starving zombies. There is a major change to sprinting. In order to improve long distance travel, survivor can now continue to sprint with no stamina, but they will sprint at 25% slower pace and the stamina will not ge regenerate until it stops running. You can now shoot glass with guns. Fall damage has been added. Fall damage can be reduced when pressing the crouch button just before hitting the ground, because the character does a roll kind of thing. New items such as the two-handed fire axe have been added. These can be used as a weapon, or for chopping down trees. When the tree breaks, it will drop random pieces of wood that you can use for barricading. Another axe has been added. This is a one-handed axe and it will chop trees slow with big office buildings with nice big car parks that are full of zombies. Zombies aggro more. Look at all those zombies coming towards me just because I fired a few shots. There's even a load of zombies on the roof. However, good loots tend to spawn up here, such as the Vegas rifle right in front of me. There's multiple new textures on some of the, the things like doors and floors and things, yeah. Zombies will climb over things like this in the store. Zombies are persistent and follow you for distances. Normal sized backpacks like this one in front of me are more likely to spawn in houses. There's a high chance of wood piles like this spawning in garages. Houses no sp now spawn on flatter terrain, so if there's hilly terrain around it, they flatten the ground and then the house spawns, so there should be no flying slash uh, dug into the ground houses anymore. Little trees are faster to chop than bigger trees, which you would expect. But they also give you less wood than big trees. And yet different house colors and textures. You can use the sledgehammer to ram w pieces of wood into ground. And they stay there. You can even ram them into tiled floors. And now to one of the largest and awesomest new features in the in the game. You can barricade. Now I'm gonna just show this on this tree, but you can do it on any house wall, anything. All you have to do is pick up the piece of wood that you want to barricade on, so let's let's just kill this zombie here. Come on, die. So you take the piece of wood, you can rotate it by holding X, and uh, let's say we want this here, and then we just ah uh, fuck. Then we just left click and 
boom it's attached and there we go we've got us a little ramp here so you can make yourself three houses you can fortify a proper house you can do whatever you want really um, let's see so we can make like a little stairway up here there we go whoa tree chopping makes spawn makes zombies spawn look at that now we've got oh we've got floating stuff but yeah if you get the gist of it you can just nail anything to everything, you just need a hammer to nail it, an axe to chop the trees, sledgehammer to ram things into the ground, and you can make yourself your own beautiful houses using these pieces of wood and 2x4s and other longer ones and anything really. Look. Look at that. You can just make random stuff even. Now, with this barricading, there are some, some things that have been added as well. To, um, survivors can remove a boat using the secondary attack right mouse button while wielding the hammer. So actually, let's go back up there and I'll show you that. Also, doors cannot be opened if there is a board nail across it. You can now drive wooden 2x4s into the ground as posts, which I showed you before. Uh, items can be nailed by a hammer and can no longer go into your backpack. Like like the the pieces of wood, you can't pick them up anymore. You can't carry them around anymore. So we can take them apart. Yeah, by just right clicking on it, keep keeping it right clicked, and there we go. The things will fall apart, and you can reuse them. At the moment, you don't need nails for this, but they do plan to implement that. You can hear stomach rumble when your character gets hungry. Uh, other objects are starting to emit various noises when struck. This is preparing for zombie hit noises and other satisfying sounds, which would be great. And another thing that has been added that I'm in the forest for, actually, is I'm trying to find a cabin. A wooden cabin, a hunting cabin, whatever you want to call it. But they have been added to forests, and apparently they spawn cool loot, so I want to find one. There are a few other features that, that I haven't covered in this video yet, but I still want to tell you about them from the from the change log now from the from the patch notes. Now, if you want to actually read them yourselves, there's a link in the description. And if you want to watch a video, I'm pretty sure Howell covered most of it in a 41-minute video. Infection diminish the stat that generally found on gas masks now decreases infection at 0.5% uh, uh, per minute rather than 1% per minute. Fix some bugs involving su survivor holding, dropping, and carrying items in multiplayer. Now, if you've seen some of the multiplayer videos, there's like random stuff floating around and stuff like that. Um, projectiles from a firearm will now shatter windows. I showed you that actually. Doors and many other objects now use a health value for destructibility. This means that weapons that do more damage will destroy doors faster rather than uh, a door taking a certain amount of hits, no matter with what. It now actually depends on what weapon you're using and how fast it will break. Zombies will now attack barricades at different uh, different speeds. Multiple changes have been made to the way zombies react to survivors, particularly when survivors are crouching. Survivors can now easily avoid zombies by crouch walking. Sprinting will not draw the attention of zombies as much as it used to. Zombies will no longer slide about or animate a walk between hits ag uh, against a door or barricade. Added extra checks to ensure that invisible zombies would probably update and appear on screen. Zombies now update more often, especially when pursuing a survivor. Zombies should better represent where they are standing and should ne never not be visible when hitting a survivor. Fix the bug causing health zombie, uh, healthy zombies not using their attack animation. The log cabin, I, I've not covered this, but there's a 50% chance of that spawning in a, in a forest zone. There's also a chance that instead of a barn you can uh, a farm might have a wood cabin or a very on a very 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 low chance if you have if you have a farm and instead of a house you'll find a wooden cabin but that's a very really really low percentage of chance some objects weights have been distributed to better represent their real world weight Fix the bug where doors would fly off the hinges and spin around in multiplayer games that you should have also seen in one of my videos if you've, if you've been watching them. That doesn't happen anymore. That was kind of funny. Fix the bug where some objects were appearing multiple times on top of each other in the farm and prison zones. This should, this should yield in a small performance increase and survivors should no longer find multiple doors in a single doorway. Added two new sprint animations. Uh, added a new sprint animation for two hand long animations such as the sledgehammer or the lacrosse stick. 
The default Far Horizon has been moved slightly to increase performance. A bug causing the SK-63 uh, rifle reloading animation to appear strangely has been fixed. And yeah, that's pretty much it. There's ov obviously more bug fixes, so if you want to see all the bug fixes, you can check out the patch notes. They're really, really long this time, and I hope I haven't missed out anything. I've covered most of the big things, I'm pretty sure. So, that was it. I hope you uh, enjoyed watching the video, and check out my, my next video on my opinion on 09, what I think about it and how I like it. So, until then, thanks for watching everybody and goodbye.